This week on Fishing 411, Mark and Jake Romanak visit East Grand Traverse Bay in search of ciscos, a little known species native to the Great Lakes. The cisco is a member of the trout family. In recent years, cisco numbers have skyrocketed at places such as East and West Grand Traverse Bays, creating what can only be described as a smackdown trolling opportunity. Not only do ciscos travel in huge schools, they aggressively strike Wolverine tackled junior streak spoons like it's going to be their last meal. In this episode, that's exactly what happens. Looks like you got one on your outside board, Dad. Stick a peek here. Oh yeah, there's some weight on there. What a beautiful morning. You might need a little help, I think, here, Jacob. Yeah, I'll get the board unhooked for you. Oh yeah, he's there. Oh yeah. Well, you know, normally in the Great Lakes state here, we talk about silverfish a lot <laughs> because we really do have a love affair with them. We're usually talking about things like steelhead or maybe coho salmon, um, chinook salmon. Uh, but today the goal is a different kind of silverfish. So this one's gonna take a while to get in here because this happens to be on a 300 steel. So this critter's a long ways away. He's a football field away. So we got some time here on our hands to get him in. But we're fishing the, uh, the Grand Traverse Bay area. And this area has a unique fishery that you won't find many other places in the Great Lakes. And we won't let the cat out of the bag just yet, but uh, this fish comes to net here. And we can get serious about uh, flushing this out a little bit. Well, I better get the net ready here for you, Dad. He's pretty close. Just getting the leader right now, so he's about 50 foot back is all. And uh, he's not happy. Staying down, fighting pretty darn good here. I haven't seen him yet. There's some flash of silver. Oh yeah, that's a good fish, Dad. Whoa, hold on here. Nice. <laughs> Look how chunky that fish is. <laughs> Man, that fish is literally a chunk. 
You know, ciscos are an indigenous species here in the Great Lakes and they're actually members of the trout and salmon family. If you take a close look back here right by my left hand, you'll see it has an adipose fin and that's what identifies it as a trout and salmon species. They look a lot like whitefish, but they're not. They're a separate species, they're delicious on the table, they're abundant, and there's a whole bunch of them in the Grand Traverse Bays. Oh yeah. Here, I'll pull tight on that fish. One of my favorite ways to catch fish, any species of fish trolling, is with a downrigger. There's just something about releasing it from the downrigger ball, reeling like crazy till you pull tight on that fish and then it's just you and the fish. It is a ton of fun. And the cool thing about these ciscos is, you know, in the world of uh, the Great Lakes, the water's gotten cleaner and cleaner. And it seems like we're catching less and less fish on our downriggers. Now, don't get me wrong, it's very still a hugely important tool for catching fish. Um, but these ciscos don't seem to mind biting on riggers. And so we catch a ton of fish with our downriggers when we're targeting these ciscos. Oh, that's a nice fish, Dad. Oh, yeah. Let me squeeze in here and see if I can put a scoop on him for you. Keep it nice. up they, are, they are literally little porkies. There you have it. A Cisco, man. These things are like torpedoes. They're really a cool species of fish. Whoa, they're slimy, they're slippery, and they are fun to fight. You know, pound for pound, these things fight pretty hard. Special considerations are provided by Trailmaster Trailers and Diola Corporation. Special considerations are provided by Procure, ruthlessly effective bait sense. This year we've been playing with a new downrigger called the Optimum TS. It's made by Canon Downrigger Company. And it's the ultimate downrigger in our opinion. It has some very unique technology. Some of the things we like about it is it's super fast. You can go up and down in the water column with your rigs very quickly, so you can set lines real fast. But more importantly, it integrates to a technology we've been using for decades, the Fishhawk Depth Probe. Now, if you're not familiar with the Fishhawk Depth Probe, what it does is it attaches to your downrigger ball, goes down, and it gives us important data at depth. It tells us the water temperature at depth and it also tells us the trolling speed at depth. And if you're a troller, you live and die by trolling speed. And if you're a trout and salmon guy, you live and die by temperature. We're looking for 50 to 60 degree water. When we find that, we typically find great fishing success. So the Canon Optimum TS is a downrigger that does all of this for us in one machine. Great product. If you're looking for new downriggers, you might want to check out the Optimum TS. Oh, can I catch up to him? Oh, there he is. <laughs> Took a while to catch up to him. When you're fishing as deep as we are today, when that fish bites and it comes free from the release on the downrigger, there is a lot of line out. So it took a little while to catch up to this puppy. But I think we finally did. I think we finally did. Yep. Now we can slow down and kind of take our time with him. I think one of the interesting things about this whole Cisco fishery is how it's kind of just creeped up on people. You know, Cisco's have been around forever, but they weren't in these um, large numbers, these catchable numbers uh, in the Grand Traverse Bay Area until that's maybe about maybe 10 years or so they've been catching these fish. But the population has just exploded. And in part, uh, it appears that they're doing okay for natural reproduction. And there are also some stocking efforts going on by the tribe. Um, and I think the reason for the stocking is to try to fill a void we have here. The lake whitefish that historically have been popular here, their populations have gone down. And so the Cisco is kind of filling that void and it's uh, making for a very interesting fishery. Uh, it is a commercial fishery, they do net them, um, but it's also a sport fishery as well. And as you can see here, they're a lot of fun. Man. Let's see if I can get him up here on the trigger side. That for is you. a fat one, isn't it? A little closer, Dad. Nice, nice, nice fish. You can hold him up this, this way, you can see just how thick that fish is. He's just absolutely got a belly full of eggs right now. Um, so they'll be small, you know, fall spawners, very similar to whitefish. Uh, October and November is when these fish are going to spawn. Wow, that is a fat one. <laughs> Definitely going to be a good one for the grill. Well, let's take a second and talk about the lures we're using today to catch these ciscos because there's not a lot of lures you're gonna take out of your tackle box to target these fish. In fact, it's a fairly simple presentation, the way that we're targeting them. Now, what we're using are spoons, but more specifically, small spoons. Now, this is a junior streak spoon from Wolverine Tackle, and it's pretty much ideal. Now, you gotta understand that ciscos are a little bit smaller fish. A four pound fish is a very nice cisco. So they're targeting these smaller forage, and all we're doing is is really just matching the hatch. 
if you come out here with big spoons and start trolling with your downriggers and divers and do more of that salmon style fishing, uh, I think you're really going to struggle when it comes to catching these ciscos. We downsize the presentation to target these little bit smaller fish. Now this spoon right here is kind of a walleye style spoon. In the world of fishing, uh, junior streak spoon is more used for walleye than probably any other species, but it's really hard to beat that. Now one of the things that I really like to look for when I'm targeting ciscos in these smaller spoons is the back of the spoon. You know, you can pretty much choose whatever you want, but the back is more important in my opinion. You're really looking for that silver back. A lot of these fish are foraging on species like alewives, which really are a silvery fish, and so by adding that silver back spoon to it, we're matching the hatch again. So the junior streak spoon from Wolverine Tackle is pretty hard to beat when it comes to targeting these ciscos. Well, we talked earlier about how you've got to watch your, your downriggers really closely uh, when you're fishing for ciscos because it's easy to miss the bite. And that's exactly what happened here. I've been trolling for a while and hadn't caught a fish. And I'm like, man, I'm going to check that line. You know, because we've been having some pretty steady action. I popped it pretty soon. What do I find? I was dragging a fish. So you got to keep a real close look on those rod tips. And if you've trolled for a half hour or so and you haven't got a bite, you might want to bring that line in and check it. There's a chance that you're dragging a fish. And uh, this is just a small one, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, let me see if I can just hoist him. Oh, I think I can hoist him. They've been keeping us busy today, that's for sure. Cisco's, there are a bunch of them there, there's no question about that. Uh, in the springtime, we'll target these fish shallow, and then late fall, we'll actually target these fish shallow. But in the summertime, you'll find these fish deeper, and it really depends on where temperature is. Now, this year, we've had an extremely hot summer, and so we have to target these fish deeper. In fact, we're 100 feet down. That's why the downriggers are so effective right now, because uh, it's the best way to get down to that depth. Um, but it really just depends on what your graph's showing you. If you're marking those fish high, don't be afraid to fish them high. If you're marking them deep, they'll bite deep, too. Looks like a, maybe a lake trout? I think you might have a lake trout. got a little bonus fish here. Yep. I think you got yourself a bonus fish there. I won't complain about that. Well, that's a nice bonus fish too. When it comes to Grand Traverse Bay, this bay has a ton of lake trout in it. And so these fish are doing exactly the same thing. They're out here foraging on all of this bait fish that's out here that's piled into the bay right now. So you'll get a mixture of different species. And I'm not going to complain about a bonus fish like that. Special considerations are provided by Precision Trolling Data and the Lake St. Clair Walleye Association. Special considerations provided by the Ultimate Sport Show Tour, Michigan's Elite Sport Shows. Eagle Claw presents the 411 on Fishing. If you're looking for the ultimate in sensitivity in your fishing, you're probably looking at something called super braids. Now super braids have very low stretch, so they're very sensitive, it allows you to feel every little bite out there. And there are different kinds of super braids out there to choose from. There are four carrier braids and there are eight carrier braids. Now a four carrier braid has fewer fibers and so it doesn't have quite the abrasion resistance of the eight carrier braids. The other thing about a four carrier braid is if you've ever listened to somebody or if you fished a braid line and you hear that sawing motion in the guides, you can hear that, that noise, that's indicative of a little bit rougher line that's typical of a four carrier. If you don't like that and you want to have that smooth sliding through the line effect, more like monofilament, the eight carrier braid is going to give you more abrasion resistance and it's going to give you that smoothness through the reel, uh, smoothness through the rod guide, you're not going to have that noise. Now Daiwa is a leader in braid production. They make three different kinds to choose from. They make their J-Braid 4, they make their J-Braid 8, and they now have a new one called J-Braid Grand. What's different here is the abrasion resistance. This stuff is super tough. You just can't abrade it, you can't break it. So if you're looking for certain kinds of fishing, like let's say flipping, where you're throwing in the heavy cover all the time, J-Braid 8, the Grand is gonna be your choice. Another great thing about Super Braids is they come in high visibility colors for casting applications where you need to see the line, you need to see the bite, or if you want something more stealthy, you can get them in low vis colors as well. If you look at Daiwa Braids, I think you'll find they're some of the best in the market. They will help you catch more fish. Can you pull this board off for me, Dad? I will, I will, I will. Thank you. There you go. We got one going on the steel line. And the steel line's fishing in that 60 foot range. It's a 300 foot steel. It's a weighted line. Um, it gets you a little bit deeper than what lead core does. And uh, 
You know, I think you probably noticed when you watch Fishing 401, we normally run a lot of rods. But in this situation, because we're fishing deeper, we're actually running less rods and putting those rods uh, more in the right zone, which is deeper. And so when you're fishing this deep, anywhere from 60 to 150 feet down, in my opinion, it's better to run less rods uh, and just be more efficient with your lures in the right zone. And so these 300 steels have done a pretty good job today. We've caught quite a few fish on these. Um, they fish deep and, and they're really getting the job done. Now they're not fishing as deep as the downriggers, but there's still some fish higher up in the water. And, uh, and those are the fish that we're targeting with these weighted steel. You know, another thing you really want to keep in mind when you come out here to target these Cisco's is their mouths. Their mouths are very small and they're very soft, and so it's very easy to pull that hook right out of their mouth. I'm trolling two and a half miles an hour, and I have a reel that picks up a lot of line. And if I just simply reel really fast, I'm going to pull that hook right out of that fish's mouth. So it's slow and steady wins this race. If you start horsing them, you're going to lose a lot of these Cisco's. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely a good one. <laughs> Look at that torpedo down there. They are so cool. They don't quit fighting, do they? No, they really don't. A little closer. Nice. Nice, nice fish. Well, that is a nice Cisco right there. And that fish came on something a little bit different. This is something that I've been playing with the last year or two, and that's trolling rooster tail spinners. Uh, in my mind, I thought, you know, it's that silver flash. That's pretty much what we're looking for as far as matching the hatch of this forage. You know, it's starting to lay flat. The sun's coming up and the bite slowed down a little bit. So I tried putting on a rooster tail spinner and just like that, we got bit. So, um, you know, what you're trying to mimic is that silver flash. Spoons do a really good job of doing that, but a, uh, inline spinner like this rooster tail does exactly the same thing. You know, the time's come to rehook up this steel line onto a planer board to send it out to the side. Uh, but an offshore board comes standard with two releases. It comes up on the front with an OR19. That's the orange release that's up on the front. And then we have an OR16 release on the back. And it's pretty much, uh, in this situation, these are probably more considered monofilament type releases. But if you find yourself in a situation where you need to use these style releases with braid, there is a trick to use an OR19 release with braid. And basically, all that I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the release on the braided line uh, just like you would do on any other type of line and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little slack in the line and I'm going to make a little U and then I'm going to put that line right back through there again and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up the OR16 release in the back and in that situation I normally just leave that without having to put that U. Now what you've done is you've created a situation where the braid doesn't slide through that release. Now over time it's going to wear on the pads of the release. Again these releases were meant for monofilament but in this situation I don't have a braid release with me on the boat. I can make that OR19 work and I can catch some more fish. Special considerations are provided by Cisco Fishing Systems and Striker Brands. Go early, go late, go prepared. Additional considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Trolling without a fishhawk is called boating. The one thing about the fall Cisco bite is these fish tend to be deep and they're often 100 feet or more. And so if you don't have downriggers on your boat, you're probably going to struggle a little bit. The downrigger is the most efficient tool we have for fishing that 60, 80, down to 100, or even 150 feet. So if you don't have downriggers, it could be a tough bite for you. But if you do have downriggers, it could be some of the best fishing you've ever enjoyed. And there he is. <laughs> downriggers are like magic. They really do make deep water fishing a lot of fun. There's no question about it. If you fish deep water in the Great Lakes, you definitely need to invest in a set of riggers. And uh, I think you'll find that uh, you'll be very, very happy you did. Whoa, whoa, this fish going crazy. Even though downriggers can be expensive, you don't need a ton of them. When I first started fishing the Great Lakes, it was very common for boats to be equipped with four riggers. These days, two is what I see mostly in a trailer boat fishing boat. So uh, two downriggers is not cost prohibitive. It's going to allow you a lot of options and put a lot of fish in the boat for you. Fight right to the end, don't they? Nice fish, Dad. One more fish here for the live well. Woo. There we go, Dad. Hooked up again. We're hooked up. Just had to pull tight on that one. Took a little bit to get pulled tight on him. He's coming now. Woo. 
It is getting warm. This time of year is hard to dress for. You wake up in the morning and you're wearing just about everything you own. And the second that sun gets up there, you're stripping it off about as fast as you can. And today, you could not ask for a prettier day on the water. It is laid glass calm uh, and it's warm. And we're at that time of year, late September. We're not gonna see very many more of these days. So we gotta take them and we gotta love it. They look so cool in that clear water, don't they? They get that same kind of coloration that the steelhead has, that emerald green color. A little closer. Got it. Nice. Nice fish. Look at that. Another beautiful Cisco. Very, very cool. You know, these fish have kept us very busy today. We've had our hands full just catching these fish. You know, my name is Jake Romanak, and you've been watching Fishing 4-in-1. Come up here to Grand Traverse Bay, put some lures out in the water, like these little spoons, and you're gonna catch a pile of these fish, and it's just something a little bit different. You're gonna have a great time. Closed captioning is provided by Lakeside Motorsports, Michigan's premier marine and power sports company. Fishing 4-in-1 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, Lorenz Electronics, Starcraft Marine, Yamaha Outboards, Yakima Bait Company, Niagara Falls USA, Smooth Moves, and Jay's Sporting Goods. Some people like to just lay these out, throw them on the grill, and uh, just season them up, and they're great that way. But what a lot of people do is they can them, because you can get large numbers of them. And when you can Cisco's, it tastes very much like canned salmon or even canned tuna.